Many of us know about sarees through our mothers, aunties, nannies, dadis, that one teacher, our own farewell parties, and even Zendaya. But how much do we really know about these six-yard pieces of cloth lying in our closets at home? What does it mean to wear a sari, and where do they come from? Around 5,000 years ago, the sari began its journey in ancient India during the Indus Valley period. This statue of the shawl being draped on an Indus priest is proof of just how old the idea of a sari is. After the Indus Valley civilization came the Vedic age, where sarees were mentioned in ancient texts and scriptures as an essential garment for all women. Queens, empresses, and female rulers covered both their upper and lower bodies in fancy two-garment sarees to assert their authority. Poorer women often wore the sari as a single garment for practical purposes. We all know the Mughals as our most extravagant ancestors. In fact, many of your aunties' fanciest sarees were probably inspired by Mughal era fabrics, including Banarsi silk and other rich fabrics embroidered in silver and gold. Women at the time also wore Persian style outfits resembling what we now know as shalwar kameez. To cover their heads, they wore a sari like dupatta, a subtle statement that marked the origins of modern Desi Muslim fashion. Of course, the British felt the need to say something about the sari after exploiting our land and resources and people and, well, just about everything. In 1858, colonial rulers thought saris were immodest and therefore immoral. Saris now permanently had to be worn with a blouse and a petticoat underneath to address British concerns towards the revealing fabric. Still, the choice to wear saris under colonial rule became a way for Indian women to resist the system and express their own cultures. After the 1947 partition, the sari remained a symbol of feminine power, often worn by women politicians such as Indira Gandhi, India's first and only female prime minister, as well as West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee. Many prominent women we have all heard of at home have proudly worn saris, like Madam Noor Jahan and Iqbal Bano, who wore a sari for her iconic 1985 rendition of Fez's Hum Dekhenge. This was performed in resistance to the Zia regime, which had banned sarees for being un-Islamic. <laughs> Classical dancer Shima Kirmani also joined this resistance, wearing her own style of sarees for performances. Later, the Gulabi gang emerged in India as a group of pink saree-wearing freedom fighters against misogyny, abuse, and oppression. Making a sari involves a whole lot of craft work. For generations, weavers have worked day in and day out to design and produce the intricate patterns and motifs that make every sari unique. Alongside an evolution of style, the sari embraces regional influences and weaving techniques. From the Kanjeevarams of South India to the Tant saris of West Bengal, each version carries the essence of its origin. Today, Most women save their sarees for special occasions, like weddings, farewells, graduations, and other formal events. But many corners of social media are dedicated to bringing sarees back to common culture, encouraging South Asian women to express themselves uniquely through this versatile piece of fabric. Throughout history, the sari stands as an emblem of South Asia's cultural heritage and artistic finesse. Its timeless charm continues to weave vastly different stories of tradition, creativity, expression, and resistance. All of this is to say that the sari is more than just a piece of clothing. It's a feminine force to be reckoned with. <laughs> <laughs>